Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. This week we have a special guest joining our show, Sinestra. He is behind the CEDH decklist database, he is a Tassigur aficionado that produces great decks and also ventures as content creator on YouTube. For this week's match, David is piloting Belzebob's Emery's Rusty Rocks, Late is on his old favorite Anya Falcon Wrath, Baal brought his CDH take on Galazeth, and Sinestra is on his Tassigur Golden Control. Note that this video was recorded before Modern Horizons came out. David won the die roll and he kept his first 7, with an island and a flooded strand. Mox Diamond and Urza's Bobble will allow him to cast Emery turn 1 and have a fierce guardianship at the ready. Chromatic Star is card draw and back to basics can be crucial versus two tainted pack mana bases. Leite didn't need to mulligan with a hand allowing him for turn 1 Anya. Lucky Gemstone Caverns, a snow covered swamp and a sun scorched desert as an outlet already. Chrome Mox further helps the turn 1 Anya, Cult to the Nether Wall and Brain Gorgeous are madness cards to keep digging with his commander and despite two of his mana sources making him exile two cards from his hand, he still has Skimming Symmetry to tutor for the win con. Bal also kept his first hand, with a Shivan Reef, Reflecting Pool and Ancient Tomb that will allow him to cast turn 1 Cursed Totem. Man Vault can help on casting Galazeth or other stuff like an overloaded Cyclonic Rift, and Reality Shift can help on removing key creatures like a World Guards of Dragon. Lastly, Sinestra Kmuldigan once and kept the hand which can output Ristic Study turn 1, thanks to Marshlands, Dark Sleek Shores and Undergrowth Stadium, paired with a Mox Diamond and a Lotus Petal. For bonus added card draw, he still has a Dark Confident. Ready for this match? After a show of power from 6 different Tassigers, Late stops David's horse with his lucky Gemstone Caverns, exiling a snow-covered swamp. David then gets to his turn, plays an island and casts Urza's Bobble. He follows that with a Mox Diamond, discarding a Flooded Strand, allowing him to cast Emery turn 1 with 1 mana still available. He mills 4 cards, sadly didn't find in great outlets. He then casts his Chromatic Star and passes. Late starts his turn with a Chrome Mox, exiling Anya's Ravager. He then plays his Sun Scorched Desert, pinging the black deck for 1. He then casts his commander, Anya, and passes. Bal draws, and still in his draw step, David activates the bubble targeting him, and randomly looking at his Shivan Reef. Bal then plays an Ancient Tomb and casts his Cursed Totem. However, David doesn't like it, so he responds with his Fierce Guardianship. On Bal's end step, Blade activates Anya, discarding Brain Gorgeous, drawing a card, and then discards a Call to the Netherworld that he actually casts, returning the Brain Gorgeous to his hand. He draws and then activates Anya again, discarding Brain Gorgeous again and stopping there. In Sinestra's upkeep, David draws one from the bubble and then Sinestra draws his card for the turn. And what a card! Sinestra plays his Marsh Flats and cracks it for his Swamp, fearing a Back to Basics or a Blood Moon. He then plays his top decked Mana Crypt. He follows it with his Lotus Petal and casts his Ristic Study. His turn is not over yet as he casts his Mox Diamond discarding Undergrowth Stadium and with that he's able to cast his Dark Confident before passing. David plays an island and cracks his Chromatic Star for blue, hoping to draw something. He does not cast back to basics, as it would only stop Leighton Ball. And Sinestra has a huge card engine going on, so he activates Emery, targeting Soul Guide Lantern and casting it. He doesn't pay for Ristic and follows that with a Gilded Drake, not able to pay for Ristic again. It enters and after some discussion he targets Anie, as he doesn't feel like cracking his Lantern right away. Late has good cards in hand he doesn't want to discard, so Drake's trigger resolves without any response. He passes, and on latest turn, he plays a Mana Confluence. He follows that with a Lotus Petal, not paying the one. He then cracks his Petal for a Dark Ritual, not paying again, and then casts an Archfiend of Spite, unable to pay for Ristic, as he hopes to keep pressure with 9 flying damage. He attacks Sinestro with a Drake and passes. Bal plays a Shivan Reef and then casts a Talisman of Creativity, not paying for the study. He then casts a Mana Vault and pays for the study before passing. Sinestra loses the Crypt Roll, but Dark Confidence Trigger reveals a game-changing Eldritch Evolution. He then draws and plays the Dark Sleek Shores. He ponders for a bit and casts Carpet of Flowers. He goes to his second main phase and generates two green with Carpet, to cast his Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing his Dark Confident. He gets a Thassa's Oracle to the battlefield, and in response to the trigger, he fires a Demonic Consultation. In response, David activates Anya, digging for something, but finds nothing, so Sinestra takes game 1. GG. After this turn 2, fueled by a lot of Ristic triggers, we decided to go for another match. For some variety, Sinestra decided to bring a different deck, Rograk and Timna. This time, Bal won the die roll and he kept his first 7, Spire of Industry and Scalding Tarn for lands, with Everflowing Chalice and a Mana Vault for ramp. 
Chain of Vapor is good interaction versus World Guarder at least, while Force of Negation and Pact of Negation can help police the table and maybe defend a potential attempt at winning. Sinestra is now the lucky one with the pre-game Gemstone Caverns and a Fetid Heath for Lance. Enlightened Tutor might be aimed at a Mana Crit for an early Ad Nauseam. If it is countered, he relies on Mizzix Mastery to recast it next turn. Goblin Welder is mostly a way to shit Bolas Citadel into play and Wishclaw Talisman can further help this combo-hungry hand. David kept another 7 capable of turn 1 Hamry. Heck, that's mostly what the deck does. Two basic islands, Lotus Petal, Mana Crypt and an online Mox Opal will be more than enough. After that, he has Flusterstorm and Pact of Negation to police the board and hopefully hit some outlets with the milled cards. Finally, Late Mulligan once and kept a slightly slower hand. Bloodstained Mire, City of Brass and Mana Constance for lands and a Mana Crypt for Ramp. Mausoleum Secrets is most of the time the tutor to the reanimation aura to combo off with World Garger, thanks to many madness creatures discarded like incorrigible youths. Deflecting Swat might be just what he needs for protection if he wants to go off. Let's see how this one unfolds. Before the game starts, Sinestra announces his luck with his gemstone caverns, exiling a goblin welder. Balden draws, plays a scalding tarn and cracks it for a basic island, to avoid David's back to basics. He casts Lotus Petal and follows it with a mana vault. He passes and on his end step Sinestra fires his Enlightened Tutor for a Mana Crypt. On his turn he plays a Fetid Eath and casts his Mana Crypt. He then casts Timna followed by the best zero drop creature in the game, Rograk. On the Vid's turn he plays an island and casts Mox Opal. He follows it with a Lotus Petal and here comes another turn 1 Emery. He sadly mills some good stuff and then passes without casting Mana Crypt to appear less ahead. Late plays in Bloodstained Mire and cracks it for a Badlands. He casts his Mana Crypt as well and passes. Baltop decks nicely. He plays a Spire of Industry and a drawn Jeweled Lotus, which he cracks right away to cast his commander, Galazeth Prismari. It enters and gives him a treasure, and then he casts an Everflowing Chalice actually kicked for two. He passes and Sinestra manages to win his Crypt Roll. He goes to combat right away, sending Timna at later. Timna triggers and he pays one to draw a card. He plays a Windswept Heath and cracks it for a plateau before letting David get to it. David plays an island and brings his mana crypt out. He then activates Emery targeting his Arcane Signet in the yard and casts it. He follows it with a top deck back to basics. It resolves and suddenly Sinestra's Ad Nauseam seems a no-go. David passes and on latest upkeep the crypt roll comes favorably. He ponders his options before playing an Arid Mesa. He cracks it for a Snow Mountain, which, despite being Rakdos, is on a tainted backed mana base, so has little space to maneuver. He casts his commander, Anya, and follows it with a jeweled amulet that he activates to store his last floating colorless mana before passing. Balan taps his island and takes one from the vault. He top decks another basic island which he plays. Considering Sinestra has exactly Adnau's mana open, Bal attacks him with Galazath and passes. Sinestra loses the crit roll and that now seems less juicy as the game goes. He attacks Baal with Timna, getting two but paying one to draw a card. He then plays a swamp and casts Wishclaw Talisman. After evaluating each player's hand size, he activates it and chooses late to have it, hoping the blue players interact with any attempt at winning from him. He guesses and casts a Dockside Extortionist, netting him a total of 12 treasures. He goes for the main phase Ad Nauseam. As David probes Sinestra's treasures, Baal asks him if that means he has a Flusterstorm, to which he replied affirmatively, so Baal tells him not to cast it and he will interact. He art casts a Force of Negation, which wasn't quite in Sinestra's plans, as he had Mizix Mastery plan to go for it again. He sadly passes and David actually wins his Crypt Roll. He simply plays a Misty Rainforest and passes fully untapped. On his end step, Late activates Anya discarding a Mana Confluence and getting to his turn. He also wins the Crypt Roll and proceeds to activate Anya. He discards Alchemist Greeting and actually casts it, targeting Galazeth Rizmari. Bal alerts him how Timna can draw more cards than a Drake can. They agree to disagree and the choice is locked. Late is hoping that Bal wastes his turn on casting Galazeth or does nothing to police Sinestra in hopes for him to win in his next turn. He then activates Anya three times, discarding Menace cards and finds and plays a Prismatic Vista that he cracks for a Snow Swamp. He then activates Wishclaw Talisman to find an animate dead, hoping to win next turn, and gives the Wishclaw back to Sinestra, further pushing the limits of the blue decks. He passes and on Baal's draw step he loses one from the vault. He simply passes, holding on to some interaction. Sinestra's creep slaps him again, he draws and activates Wishclaw getting a Ranger Captain of Eons, in hopes to have an outlet to grind the game in case his plans go south. He casts the Ranger, which can be a sign of going off or a defensive creature to stop someone. It resolves and he tutors for his teacher's supplier. 
as his plan is to go for Citadel and the supplier can mill lands in case he weaves. He then sacrifices the ranger to silence the table of non-creature spells. Blade responds by activating Anya twice and the ranger's ability resolves. Sinestro then casts his Mystic Mastery, targeting his Enlightened Tutor to find Bolo Citadel to the top. He then goes into combat, sending Timna at Baal and Darkseid at Leite, getting 2 but paying 2 to draw 2 cards. He then casts Reign of Filth, spelling Doom to the table. He sacrifices all his 4 lands and 2 treasures to cast his Bolas Citadel. He casts an Abrade from the top, dealing 3 damage at Anya. He then casts Infernal Plunge from the top, sacrificing his Darkseid for triple red. He plays an Ancient Tomb from the top and finds Imperial Seal on top as well. He casts it, finding Underworld Breach, which he also casts. He then escapes Darkseid Extortionist and David cracks his petal and Bal cracks his treasure for red, getting him 10 treasures total. He now escapes Imperial Seal to get Peer into the Abyss to the top. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond from hand and then casts Peer into the Abyss from the top through the Citadel. Just to be safe, he fires a silence so no weird creatures can be flashed. He then casts Jessica's Wheel from the top, targeting Late, which has 6 cards in hand. He then casts Mox Ember from the Exiled cards. He follows it with the Demonic Tutor for a Leonian Relic Warder, which he casts, exiling the Viz Mox Opal. He then casts Mayhem Devil and cracks two treasures pinging his own Leonian Relic Warder. With a Leonian in his graveyard, he now casts Animate Dead, targeting him, and demonstrates a loop where each time it comes into play, he chooses to exile his Animate Dead, which triggers to sacrifice Leonian Relic Warder, returning Animate Dead to the battlefield again. With each iteration, he pings an opponent to death and wins the game. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. After showcasing some of Sinestro's brews, we finally got him to join us for some games, and he actually exploded in our faces. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, Stefan, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, and Crustabal, Drunken Housecat, V, RJ, and Heated Shield, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!